Hello again, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. Got a super fun project that goes in tandem with a beautiful little German Seahoon midget submarine from OTW. Uh, we're going to be playing around with some torpedoes. All right, let's take a look at what we have to work with. Now, these, uh, these parts come with the OTW kit, and these are laid up in fiberglass. The original torpedoes were the entire length of the torpedo. They're laid up in a left and right half. There goes Jason. Um, each one of them had these little flanges in there. Now, I have reworked these because when you put the two halves together, they turn into an oblong kind of mess, a big oval, uh, which makes the end not right. So I've filed down or ground down the one side, uh, retained the, the, that uh, flashing, that little flange on the inside of the other one, and now I have a more circular-ish torpedo body, which is what we want. Again, I cut it off, only got the tail section, only got, and you can see the two flanges there. I still got to cut those and make those not oblongish. Um, there's the nose, and the other thing that we need is a new body because we want to make a watertight section of the torpedo so that we can put all of the electronics inside. Two inch PVC pipe. Here's the, the stats and the information for those of you who are looking to replicate this project. Uh, two inch PVC. Charlotte pipe. Um, it's pretty thick stuff. I'm going to say that's like uh, I don't know, a little over an eighth of an inch thick. That's fine because there's going to be lots of buoyancy in there that we're going to need to offset with weight. Anyway, um, these are the propellers that come with the kit. They're brass propellers. I've mounted them to shafts. These are nesting. If you were so inclined, you could rig up a contra-rotating gearbox. I am not going to because uh, I want to keep things simple uh, and complete this build a little bit faster. Um, because it's so big, I'll be able to put ballast low. It'll stop the torpedo from twisting, etc., etc. So only the rearmost propeller is going to spin. The outer one, or the inner one, the big one there, is going to serve as the bushing. And you can see it uh, right here. I've mounted it to... And uh, there is the shaft on the inside. The other thing that I have here are some 3D printed bulkheads that I manufactured. The one side with the holes there um, go into the bodies. And the other side has um, a seal, an O-ring seal, that will uh, seal against the inside face of this tube, creating a waterproof compartment. Last thing, uh, well, not the last thing, more things that I have here. I've got these little Maxon Amax motors, 05888. Um, the actual motor doesn't matter. These just fit. I happen to have these on the shelf, and they're super cool motors. They're going to work really, really good. Three millimeter output shaft. Those are going to power the boat. The idea, just to uh, spoil things for you, these are going to be dumb torpedoes, just like they were in World War II, fire and forget kind of thing. Um, and you're basically going to turn them on with a remote switch, turn them off with a remote switch. You turn them on, the torpedo is going to move forward, slip off some hangers on the body, shoot forward, little hangers are going to retract into the torpedo body, um, and it'll go as far and as long as you want it to go until you turn it off. Um, so we're going to have the switch, we're going to have a battery, and that is going to be it. So let's build this sucker. All right, one of the first things that we need to do is build some seals. Now, you can either build your seals in the manner that I am about to outline for you, or you can buy them from my website, and completely done and ready to go. One eighth oil light bushing. Uh, what is this, nine thirty seconds? Nine thirty second brass tube, and one eighth cup seal. Um, so we're gonna cut these off uh, about three quarters of an inch long press in the bearing or the bushing and then uh, drop the seal in the other side. And there we go. Completed watertight 
seal for a 1 8 inch shaft, which is going to be the only hull penetration of our waterproof compartment. So now <clears throat> I'm going to need to measure out the exact center of our little bulkhead here and mount the uh, two seals in the two bulkheads. Okay, next step here, I've machined a little flat in the end of my drive shaft here, and I got a couple of universal joints. Uh, these are plated, they're not going to rust. Got 3 16 on one side, which is going to go on the drive shaft, and then uh, 1 8 on the other side, which is basically now this is an adapter. It's going to go through the bulkhead, through the seal, and uh, attach to the motor. So um, what we are going to do, we're going to go ahead and insert this in here. We're going to slip this on the end. And now in order to get to the set screw, uh, I am simply going to drill a little hole through the, uh, the body there so I can get my wrench on there and uh, be able to tighten it down because this whole section is going to free flood. All right, here is uh, the completed bulkhead. So we got our little intermediate shaft right here. And that's uh, spinning nice and smooth, uh, the propeller on there. Um, I'm gonna feed that through my little seal. And I've marked out on here which of these goes where to make sure my seal is perfectly aligned. If I can get this in the hole. There we go. And then this slips on like this. Now, <clears throat> uh, there we go. Um, what I'm not, I'm not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this bulkhead on with two flathead screws uh, so that this is going to all be disassembled for maintenance and repair and all that stuff. But I'm not going to do that yet because I want to make sure when I put the body on that it's perfectly like aligned. So if I have to make a correction here, I can do that uh, and then bolt it down. So for now, that's good. Um, you can see on the end, shaft is sticking out. I got a little flat on there. Now I've got another little adapter um, uh, universal joint here. So it is one eighth by three millimeters. So this is gonna slip on just like this. It's also going to act as a reverse thrust bearing so the prop doesn't spin off. All right, and now I'm gonna tighten that down and then we're gonna make a motor mount. All right, the next thing to address here is how to mount these motors to the bulkhead. And I was gonna make like brackets, I was gonna do like brass and all sorts of stupid things like that. Um, but then I, just out of curiosity, I grabbed some one inch PVC pipe. And I'm like, what are the odds that this will fit? And it actually, it's, it's friction fit to this motor. So totally lucked out. I just notched this out so that uh, we'll be able to see this universal joint uh, inside there. So I'm going to glue this down permanently and then we'll be able to slip the motor in place and get access to the universal joint to bolt it all down. All right, here is the completed uh, motor assembly bulkhead dealy. Um, got a nice free spinning propeller in the back. Uh, motor bulkhead. This just torques down, keeps the motor locked in place. It's a stainless M4 bolt uh, with the universal. Now, actually, what I did, um, I re removed the universal in there and I just sleeved that 3 16 shaft down to a 1 8 shaft. So it's a straight through. It just simplified things a little bit more and actually uh, made the whole assembly uh, run a little bit smoother. But we can go ahead and check this now. I'm just gonna throw 12 volts on the motor. Super smooth, no binding. I'm super excited. All right, now we're gonna grab uh, our switch, our battery, see if we can rig it all up, get that working, and uh, getting close to buttoning it up and starting trimming. All right, next step. So we've uh, wired up our remote switches. We've got connectors that go to the motor and to the battery. 
We've got all of our fobs labeled port and starboard, so we know which one goes to which torpedo, and we've labeled the torpedo bodies accordingly as well. Now, uh, just use some more of this PVC pipe and uh, notched it out like this. It's gonna slip over like this, and then this is gonna go here like this. Well, let's go like this, <clears throat> like that. And then this goes on like this. We're just gonna tape this on so it's nice and centered, and then make up our connections. And the, the reason for this is because we wanna make sure every time you remove and install all of these components, they go back in the same spot so it doesn't affect trim. So let's go ahead and start with that. All right, here's our, our tidy little uh, assembly there, and this will fit inside the tube. Um, we've got a little wire extension that we made up. We can go ahead and put that on. And we can test it. We'll put this power to the switch. And in theory, when we push the button, it should fire up. And it turns off when we hit the button. So now we're gonna go ahead. I've, we've gone ahead and we've actually already um, trimmed the other torpedo. So we've actually got some weights in here curing. I'm not going to tilt this forward to show you what they look like, but it's 290 grams of weight um, right in front of the battery. It's going to look kind of like this. So from here to here, about four inches back from the front edge. So those are curing in place with some RTV. Got some Velcro on the bottom of the battery. Um, we're going to put the other side inside so the battery will get stuck down and won't move inside. All right, here's the final version that we're talking about. Um, we got the rear motor assembly with the extension. We've got the battery. Now, if you'll remember, originally we were going to use the 1500 milliamp 11.1 uh, .1 volt lithium polymer battery pack. We put the first torpedo in the test tank and it turned into a rocket ship. Um, this is a 7.4 volt battery pack, so in theory it's spinning the motor at about 60% of where the 11.1 .1 volt pack was, and sure enough, uh, the revolutions per minute of the motor are greatly reduced, which is a good thing. So, we got uh, weights inside there. You can see they've been adhered. So we're gonna take a cable, drop it in, To the body, I got top dead center marked. Uh, rotate this to the top. And this is a, a pretty precision-ish fit. You gotta kinda like wiggle it. There we go. Got that, we'll plug in our other battery. Tuck in the cables. So what we did is we, we took the battery, weighed the difference and added weights to the battery. To make it the same as the 11.1 .1 volt battery pack that we were previously playing around with. Same deal up front, top dead center, that's the top dead center. There we go. Give it a try. And she works. Let's go to the test tank. All right. We just dropped it and you can see where it's floating. Let me make sure there's no air bubble. There's a little bit of air trapped in there. So if we did this properly, the stern is gonna sink super gradually. But it is positively buoyant. We want these weapons to be as neutrally buoyant as possible so that it doesn't affect the trim of the main boat, the Sea Hound. So, oh, now you can see it's actually floating. Yeah, so it's it's just barely positively buoyant. And we wanted the stern low so that the props have less of a tendency to pop up out of the water and suck air. Um, maybe just grab the body and turn it on as opposed to... Yeah, it's gonna go like crazy. 
We're going to go to the pool. And we're going to launch it from one end to the other, see what kind of velocity it has. I'm actually super worried. If we take a look at the, uh, the front of this deadly weapon here, uh, this, of course, is historically accurate. These are all the, you know, the, 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 the sensors that would tell the weapon when to explode. Um, but that would do some damage. If it hits somebody, um, it would also do a lot of damage for the weapon to strike the side of the pool. So we may end up replacing those with rubber bumpers. But regardless, we're too excited to not test it in the pool, so that's where we're going.